the Chandira trilogy, it, it's such a unique story in itself that I wanted to, I wanted it to stand alone in the five book series, but also be a part of the five book series. If that makes sense. Uh, yeah, they're on it like that, like I said, that medieval planet and uh, it just started, I don't know, it just started out as an idea in high school and it just grew and grew and grew for 30 years into a big, huge epic. This was only supposed to be about them on that world and then going back home. And it was great, perfect middle ending. It was just going to be like that, you know? I was completely happy. But then uh, I realized, uh, I know this is going to have fans, you know? And it does now, too. And I know they're going to be very curious about what happened to Max and Alex after they got back, what happened to the crew, you know, um, after they got back home. And so um, I wanted to tackle that because actually, to be honest, I myself was interested too. So uh, there's a whole new set of characters, whole new world. They're back in the intergalactic age. I didn't know what it was going to be about, but I knew it was going to involve a lot of worlds and a lot of like intergalactic tra travel. And so um, they were going to be separate stories from, the, from Max and Alex's Chronicles, you know? They were going to be completely just separate stories. Basically, I just consolidated all the sci-fi and fantasy notes all together into this crowd chronicles and it worked it worked it worked like magic yeah wow everything just lined up and i wanted to put my sci-fi stories in that you know because i was so so fascinated by blade runner you know even when i saw it when i was like five years old with my mom and dad i was a little kid i was still just blown away by it you know that's how i made carmine and darkina carmine is um broken like him you know i've met with broken native women like her in urban settings and it's pretty sad but yet they're like they're they're uh, they they seem to have adapted you know and um and that impressed me about them even though like some of our people are broken frank they seem to have like even adapted to um cities you know and they're not in the best ways but they have, you know like they don't have like the most like legal hustles and everything right they're, like most moral hustles but like I just, I just had to pay homage to those native people of ours too, and you know that um, they're broken, but yet they, um, they're thriving. You know, in their environment, even, even if it's in a broken environment, they're still thriving. I lived among the Shinnecock, and there were two um, big brothers, one muscular guys, um, filmmakers too, and well, one was government, one was working in government, one was a filmmaker. They were Shinnecock. Um, I, they, I guess they'll be flattered if I mention them. They won't mind. Uh, Marcus and. Um, Maurice, uh, and um, they made him like like many people, like countless people in my life. They made an impression. Just like I said, um, she was inspired by my friend Carissa, and and like I said, she, she probably won't listen to. She doesn't listen to stuff like this, but if she did, she'd be flattered, you know. Because it kind of represented um, Carissa's personality too a little bit. As I mentioned, being an indie author, not being a, a port artist, and AI doing such a oh my god, excellent a a one job. Uh, that's why I decided to use it because I, I had to get the series out, you know, because as I said, I, I waited too long. It's been 30 years. Not only am I waiting for it, but Indian country was waiting for it, you know, even if they didn't, even if they don't think they are, they are. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I just want, I just had to get the series out.